boys and girls. Once again, my name is Janet, and I'm happy that you're able to watch us from wherever you're tuned in. I know that we have had a nice time walking through the lessons of April, the topic of knowing my savior. I remember we started with the Palm, Good Friday story. We've talked about a Palm Sunday when Jesus was entering Jerusalem. We've talked about Easter. And last Sunday, we talked about building our faith on the rock, just like the story of the foolish man and the wise man. And today, we wind up our Sundays in this month of uh, April as we talk about Psalm 23. Boys and girls, do you know Psalm 23 and what it says? I challenge you, memorize it. Next time when we meet, be able to tell me the whole of Psalm 23 because it's a promise and it's a prayer and it is something that God is promising to do for us. He tells us that he is our shepherd. So I pray that we will continue trusting in God, knowing him, walking with him, obeying him through obeying our parents. So enjoy the rest of your lesson today and have a happy, happy Sunday. See you next month, May. A good morning, children. I'm so happy to speak with you this morning and to share the word of God. I pray that you've had a wonderful week um, and just looking forward to share the word today with you. Please get your Bibles and a notepad and so that you're able to go through the lesson and we can go through it together. And of course, today we'll be reading from Psalm 23. Before we start, uh, can we just bow down our heads for a word of prayer? Uh, dear Father, thank you so much for the love that you have for us, for the teachings you have for us, for your word that tells us, never will you leave us, never will you forsake us. And with that word, Lord, we can stand strong. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. So, great. We are going to go right into the Word, and I hope you've opened Psalm 23. And most of us will know Psalm 23 by heart. We have uh, read it, we have heard songs about it, and it's a psalm that is known and loved by so many of us because it just makes us really know the heart of God. And you know when you say a shepherd, it is one of the ways that God is described. And in the Bible, there are so many ways that God is described. In Ezekiel 43, you know how they described him? They said his voice is like many waters. Can you imagine that? So, you know, sometimes the water is like trickling and sometimes the water is like an ocean and the waves are all harsh and up in the air and you can hear almost that thundering noise and you can imagine somebody describing that his voice so his voice is not one way it's many ways that we hear his voice but in this way this today we know of God who is described as a shepherd and he's described as a shepherd by David and we're going to start off by calling him David. Remember, he becomes King David at one point. And before he becomes even King David, he writes this psalm. So let's a little bit remember about David. David is the one who killed Goliath. You remember with the slingshot? And he is the same David who used to look after sheep. And he is the same David we hear that fought with bears and lions so that he could save his sheep. So that was David when he was a shepherd and that is how David looked after his sheep. And I love that he was a shepherd first because then he could understand the heart of God. So when he writes, a, we know that David loved music. So when he writes a psalm, he is writing from what he feels God has put in his heart, what the Holy Spirit has put in his heart. Um, and so you can imagine that when he's being a king, he remembers, I must be like a shepherd. I must look after the sheep the way God looked after me, the way I looked after the sheep, right? So you can imagine if we are going to start comparing that kind of king 
who is a shepherd and the king who is the king today. And I know today we can think of our own presidents. Uh, and here, when, we are look, when you're on the street and you hear the president is coming, what do we see and hear? You know, mostly you will hear the noise and then you will see the cars, the motorcade passing. The cars have to go on the side to allow the president to pass through. He's not going to be in traffic with the rest of us. Very soon we are going to watch the coronation of the king um, in uh, maybe a few months. And I hope that you will watch the coronation of the king of England when it comes up. But I listened to one thing in news. You know what it said? That he will be in a carriage which is four tons in weight. Four tons. Do you know one ton is the weight, let me just say, of an elephant? So four tons, you can imagine the weight of that chariot where he will be. I want you to look at it, what he will be wearing, the kind of music that will be played, and what he will be doing. Maybe he'll be waving at everybody else. And when we hear king, that is usually the kind of king we think of. But Jesus, we can see, and our father is a different type of king. And that is why when David becomes king, he's like, he's remembering and thinking, you know, the kind of a leader that God is to us, he is like a shepherd. So I want us to think about a shepherd. And the shepherd is this guy, he or lady, let's say, and they're in with the sheep. And what are they doing? What type of clothes are they wearing? Are they wearing suits? Are they wearing uh, gowns? No. In order for them to be in the same environment as a sheep, they wear the clothes that are comfortable. So they'll be wearing linen or cotton, something comfortable that allows you to run, that allows you to lie down and be where the sheep are at. So let's, a little bit more. When you see the shepherd, how do you think he'll be smelling like? Can you imagine? He'll most probably be smelling like the sheep itself from carrying the lamb that cannot walk, from trying to take out the ticks of the sheep. And you can imagine for him, he has to be with the sheep. He is not aloof. Aloof meaning he's not distant from the sheep. He's right there with them. And one other thing about the shepherd and the sheep, when the shepherd speaks, and in the olden days, you know today, even when we watch the movies, the shepherd, the sheep, the shepherd is behind the sheep. In the olden days, the shepherd was in front of the sheep. And he would say, to the left. And that's where the sheep goes. The sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. And that is what today we are called to. What are we called to do? We are called to trust in God. We are called to be sheep, not to be the one who knows where the pasture is and to know what we should be doing. No, we are told to uh, be obedient, listen to the voice of the shepherd. How do we do that? We know the word of God, we trust him, um, and we learn how to love him and grow with it and grow with him. Um, so there is something that I want us to remember, and I want you to remember the word fort, F-O-R-T, fort, like Fort Jesus. A fort is a place of refuge, or a place where you can hide. Maybe you can um, see people from afar, but you are covered. And in the word fort, F, F for us, we, I would encourage you, and I would ask you to focus on God. Oh, obey God. Obey the word of God. That is how you're being a good sheep. R, realize your limits. So there is what you can do and what you can't do. If you've done the best that you can do, and then you say, I have done and I'm in obedience of, obedience of what God has asked me to do. I don't know whether, I, so I have done my best. That is knowing your limits. And the last thing is to trust in God. T, fort, trust in God. 
So at the end of this psalm, and I want you to read the psalm. If you can know a song, I want you to read the song. I, the, if you want to, it's easier sometimes to remember when you can uh, sing a song, get the song. The Lord is my shepherd. And the last part of it is God loves us. He protects us. You know what? He's the shepherd. He knows what is best for us. And for us, we must just follow God and know that we trust him at all times. So thank you for listening and thank you for uh, learning and reading Psalm 23. And now, can I introduce Amani who is going to uh, give us the memory verse from the book of Psalms 23. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. My name is Amani and today I'll be, I'll be, I'll be seeing a memory verse from the book of Psalms. Chap Psalm chapter 23, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the, all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Amani, for that, for that verse. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us, and we shall end with a word of prayer, and I wish you a good week. Uh, Father Lord, we praise you and thank you. Thank you for your promise to us. Thank you for loving us, putting, giving us, um, giving us your love, giving us your um, word which shows us exactly how much you love us, how much you know that if we follow your voice and if we do what you ask, we will be the best that we can, the best sheep, the best person, and your child. So thank you, Father, for that. And we just uh, want to commit the rest of the week to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.